Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review. Now my sincerest apologies, I have not been doing these book reviews simply because I have not had any concentration or any focus for any period of time to read books, simply because of all the news happening in Australia, but also the world, what's happening globally. It's getting me down. It's getting me, let's just say the mind's a bit scattered. I guess in some way it's been really interesting because I have been reading a book called The Kindness Revolution, how we can restore hope, rebuild trust and inspire optimism by Hugh McKay. Now Hugh McKay is an Australian sociologist. I have a few of his books. He's written over 22 books, even some novels in that mix. But the majority of his books are all to do with communications, ethics, philosophy, psychology. They're all brilliant books. I have about four of his books already. And this was his latest one, which I didn't know about, but I uh, managed to, to see it in the library and I immediately got it simply because I knew of his name. Now, The Kindness Revolution comes at a good time. The book itself was written quite recently in 2021. It sets off on the fact that we have been through, for the last couple of years all around the world, through a traumatic period of time with a lot of change that has been put on us, mainly due to COVID and also the impact of covid to our work, to our lives, and to our societies. He approaches that aspect here with regards to looking at how we as humans be can become more resilient, knowing that we have been through all this change and so much change, and to expect that in the coming years, we're going to expect a lot more. And so with that, his chapters are all to do with what is it that we can do to build resilience and his underlying theme is overall we need to be kind to each other. Now you might think oh that's pretty straightforward but what does this actually mean and in the chapters he breaks it down to what kindness means. Basically what I took out of the, the book itself is the fact that as humans, we are wired to cooperate. We are social creatures. We're not wired to compete. So when we're seeing situations where we have to compete with each other, it's going against our grain. It's making us feel a bit out of kilter with the rest of uh, people in our community and in society because we are wired to work together, to live together, to help each other out. And somehow over time and probably the environment that we're in, we're kind of losing that. And so we start to feel more isolated and disconnected from each other. Some of the other things that I really took away from this book was the an aspect of to be kind is not necessarily a religious aspect. So he does cover in this book that it's got nothing to do with religion. It's all about human values, how we work, work, play, learn from each other, how we live with each other and how we abide and respect with, with each other. A big component of this book, which I found really interesting, was he talked about the danger of cynicism. And he saw cynicism as the completely at odds with kindness. If we are cynical, we are not kind to others. And in fact, we are actively being the players to destroy any potential of cooperation by our cynicism. And it was a really interesting point because it's very hard not to become cynicism when you see that you are in a world where you don't trust the government anymore or trust your, your employer anymore, that the trust issue then sets off a cynical attitude, which then impedes and corrodes any opportunity 
to be able to work with colleagues and to work with others in your community. So this cynicism chapter in here was really an eye opener for me. Some of the other things that he talks about is appreciating what we have in our life and kind of like not wishing things to be better, but at the same time, not wishing things to be worse because we should enjoy what we have today and now and to be in the now. Some other things he talks about is to place a common good above your own interest, your own self-interest. It's a hard ask. And he uses an example of some of the, I guess, the social etiquette that in the years past we, we did and understood, but maybe nowadays we don't understand it that well. And an example he gave was being in a movie, in a cinema, and the ads coming up with regards to getting their people to turn off their mobile phones, and then finding that people are not even following the normal social conventions we used to do in the past, but having a more egotistical and a selfish outlook and not worried about what others think in a situation when there are others around them. So being mindful, I guess, of the social etiquette and thinking about our actions as part of the common good as opposed to just doing them for self-interest. He talks about how kindness drives out arrogance. And this is an, an important thing because, like you said, arrogance and cynicism corrode the opportunity for us to work together and to cooperate. He talks about the need for also respecting others, others' conventions as well. Just because someone might not be of a similar background to you or a similar culture to you, not to assume that your culture is the one and only and your conventions are the one and the only and the right ones, but to also be mindful and learn from them what their conventions are so that you you reach a, a medium, a happy place where you can both at least feel comfortable and feel that there is no, I guess, a power struggle in it. The kindness revolution, how we can restore hope, rebuild trust and inspire optimism by Huma K, basically showed to me that to be resilient is to be open to understanding your place in the world and others place in the world, that you have one part in the place, but you are not the person, I guess, that it's all for, <laughs> that there are other people also sharing the same space and it, it is up to us to at least be open and understanding and aware of what our actions and behaviours impact and affect other people. And that destructive behaviours such as arrogance, such as self-ego, such as self-interest, such as cynicism, corrode the opportunity for us to really understand each other and to really work with each other and cooperate, especially when the world is changing and the world is becoming a lot more complex. It's becoming a lot scarier. We don't know what is around the corner. We don't know how our environment will impact us, but it is up to us to not, I guess, let go, be concerned or isolate ourselves. Rather, it is a time to really open up, be kind, ask questions, get involved in the community and be part of the community so that we can get back those behaviours that we seem to have lost many years ago. So I would highly recommend Hugh McKay's The Kindness Revolution. If you have read this book or if you've read anything similar or if you are reading a book that talks about the current situation that we're all facing nowadays and how some people like myself cannot concentrate, cannot focus anymore because of what is happening around and trying to understand and digest the crazy world that we live in and at how we can make some kind of impact in this world, then please let me know. I need to read these books. I need to put these into practice so that I too cannot 
feel overwhelmed and I, I too can also go back to feeling as if what I do actually makes a difference. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Bye for now.